That feels so much better, that short. Oh my <laughs> God, for real. What's up, guys? And welcome back to another Honest Tattooer episode. My name is John Messa, and I'm joined with Matriano. Hey, how you doing? And our homie G Money on the couch. We back in business. And we back. And this week, it's just the boys. Again. Again, I love it. Well, like we that. were supposed to have a guest today. We were supposed to have a guest today, today but they had an emergency, and yeah. uh, we hope to have her back here soon. Because she rules. Um, and you guys are going to have to wait to see what that is. But uh, how's everybody going? Good, man. Yeah, we're chilling. It's, it's late. It's late. So yeah, it's late you guys don't know this or whenever this happens, but it is about 1142 p.m. Why? Because this guy was tattooing to way fucking late. Everybody finished on time, but I finished super late. So these guys were kind enough to wait around so we could do this for you guys. Man, I was done at like... 5.30. Dude, that girl tapped out so early. Yeah. She didn't sit for that long. She told me the last session, she was like, could we just do shorter appointments from now on? I'm like, yeah, whatever. That's that's cool. And then when she came in today, I reminded her, I was like, so we're, we're doing shorter sessions, right? She's like, well, you know, I, I, I don't have anything else going on today, so we could sit longer if we need to. And I don't have any plans this weekend, so it's not like I have to worry about it. I'm like, all right, cool. So two hours into it, I say, okay, the black is done. You want to start coloring? She's like, how much longer do you think it'll be? I'm like, it's going to be a couple hours to color this in. And she's like, oh, well, could we start it and then finish it another time? And I'm like, I'd rather not. I'd rather, if we're going to color this, do it in one side. color that thing. And she's like, oh, I probably only have like an hour in me. I was like, all right, then we're calling it a day. Damn. So I guess it was, it was because of me that she didn't go longer, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, I totally oh, would have been yeah. like, oh, yeah, sure, let's do an hour. And then after she got that hour, I'd be like, just just a little bit more. And then I squeeze another <laughs> yeah, 45 minutes out of that. Uh, yeah. Actually, that's a good move. I should have done that. Uh, yeah, you should have done that. <laughs> Every time, dude. It was like, oh, just just a little more. Just give me another 10 minutes. Yeah, you can totally give your clients a good stretch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For real, yo. You know, always. Get, get some more out of them. And uh, Gabe, you know, did another masterful traditional tattoo today. That thing was cool. Oh, Ah, really, guys? Yeah, yeah bro. Yeah. Hey, what's this? You've been making hard shit look easy. <laughs> yeah, it's man, the quality of a master. Yeah. It's time. Yeah, yeah. Making hard shit look easy, bro. It's so hard to do a tattoo that's simple yet so clean and I agree. strong. Mm. Strong. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Appreciate that. I agree. I don't know if I've ever tough. tattooed a squirrel before. What? That's what that was, right? A squirrel? Yeah. yeah. I've tattooed a squirrel before. What? I've done like you've done a squirrel. I've done chipmunks. I've done rats. I don't think I've ever done a squirrel. Draw up a squirrel. I bet you'll tattoo it yeah. you've instantly. Done a, you've cute done as fuck, a bro. Honey badger. I've done a honey badger. <laughs> <laughs> honey badger don't give a fuck. <laughs> 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 Damn it. FYI, guys, YouTube honey badgers. In case you're wondering what <laughs> vicious animals. They're nasty. Yeah, they're nasty. They're cool. Yeah, they're cool. They're cool. YouTube. Honey was badgers. The guy that you tattooed today that was his first tattoo. Um, and was that his girlfriend that she that was here? No, that's a friend. So she's a bartender. That's how he knows her. Okay. I'm pretty sure they're homies. And she recommended him to me. And I've known her since I went to college about 17 or eight, 17 years ago, I mean, 18 years ago. Probably. Wow. So I did a tattoo on her while I was still an apprentice. Ah. Jeez. Yeah. So it was that guy that was his first tattoo? Um, I don't think it was his first. I feel like he has something smaller yeah, somewhere I ta else. I tattooed his forearm, the infinity yeah, symbol. That's oh, right. you did? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was his first tattoo. That right? was his first tattoo. Yeah. Cool. Um, he sat good. He sat well for it. I mean, towards the end, he started, you know, it, we did something that wrapped all the way around the arm, which you think it's fine until you get to the inner arm, and then right. you're like, fuck, this sucks. Yeah. 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 And uh, I did that whole thing with like a tight seven Ouch. up until the very last minute when I was like, ah, this needs, I need to push some things back and forth. And then I put a 27 mag just to kind of smooth things out. Yeah. Make it buttery. Yeah. Just push back some of those waves. Old guys getting waves, man. I, I've done a couple of waves on older people too. Old dudes love water. They love water. Yeah. Yeah. Salt life. Salt life. <laughs> 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 Always a sticker on the back of a Dodge Ram truck. <laughs> Salt life. Salt life. 
Uh, I told him, I was like, oh, I'm playing my Yacht Rock playlist. And he's like, now you just need that yacht. <laughs> Live that salt life. You've been rocking that playlist a lot. Dude, it's so good. Oh, man, my Yacht Rock playlist. Really, really good. A lot of good jams in there. I got the Sublime Blame. Last week, I started looking through, like, uh, Apple Music, and they have, like, years, right? Yeah. So you just put, put a year in there. You could be, like, 1983, and then it'll show you, like, rock from 1983, pop songs from 1983, like, whatever, you yeah. know? Yeah. And uh, and what does it play at the top of that year, of that category? Not necessarily. It'll just give you, like, a random playlist on there because, like, on the 1979, which I, what, that's what I was playing today, it'll give you, like... A lot of songs that came out in that year, but sometimes like not even the most popular songs from that band. It can be just like a really good B-side song. Okay. From, so it's kind of rad because you get a nice cool. range of like really popular songs. I'm like, oh, I've heard this, but it's not like one of the main songs, you know? So it's good. It's really good. I feel like I heard somewhere along the line, probably when cassettes came out, I would imagine is when this happened, is when people started listening to albums all the way through. So like a uh, like a like a B side of a, a record probably didn't get any airtime at all on the radio. So to have a song being played now is like this is a this is a band that had a song that wasn't that popular. Maybe now people have heard it because we listen to like we stream a lot of music, we listen to full albums. But like back in the day when it came out, probably nobody nobody listened to that song at all. Yeah, dude, because they were like. What do you mean? I got to stand up, go over there and flip that <laughs> record over? <bro?" laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> Probably, dude. Unless you had money and you had one of those automatic things that went, yeah. flipped it for you. Yeah. Shit. 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 Man. <laughs> That's a good long one. I love that, dude. I wonder if he knows that we do that. Because he listens to this. He listens to this. <laughs> Shout out, know? Jordan, bro. We do it for you, bro. Every time. Um, so let's start off with uh, topics, topics, topics. Topics, topics, topics. So you shared, you said you shared this before on, uh, I think you shared it on the page. Oh yeah. I'll, I'll read the quote right now. Cause I have it, man. It was a while ago. I'm not the big deal. I have it. I have it right up front. Yeah. The actual quote, quote. I have the actual quote. Oh yeah. So the other day I was, you know, scrolling through, uh, Instagram and I follow a bunch of pages that have motivational things and stuff like that. And I bumped into this quote that Matt shared before. And, uh, this quote is from Denzel Washington and this wrote, this quote reads, uh, dreams without goals are just dreams, and ultimately, they fuel disappointment. On the road to, to achieving your dreams, you must apply discipline, but most importantly, consistency, because without commitment, you'll never start, but without consistency, you'll never finish. And I was like, man, that's such a heavy quote to unpack uh, when it comes to really any kind of like tough endeavor or road that you're trying to get to. I think so many times in tattooing, there's moments where you feel like completely like just in it, gung ho, like working hard for it. And then there's the, the plateau, right? Where you feel like you're plateauing. You feel like you're not moving forward. I feel like that's when that consistency comes in. Because it's so easy to get discouraged or get a little stale or get bored and just kind of let it kind of fizzle. And then you're not pushing as hard because you're not getting the same output from putting the same effort into something. But I feel like that's when consistency is key yeah. to break through walls. So I just looked at it. I posted that quote on January 11th mm -hmm. and it, it didn't get that much engagement. So that's maybe why you didn't realize that I posted it. Okay. That's something that I wanted to talk about from what we were touching on right before we started recording, recording. Um, and I want to know, like, you know, you guys can comment probably when this comes out on it about, you know, I've, I've talked to a lot of people in different businesses and uh, they all complain about the same fucking thing. They're all complaining about the same thing, that there's just like a lack of commitment from the people and everything and everybody wants more. Mm -hmm. They want more or they want like, they want more with less work. You know, the way that somebody told me the other day, they're like, yeah, I have, I have young guys that work for me. 
that consider 35 hours, 30 hours a week to be full time already. That's crazy to me. And he, and, and then he responded to me back with like, he's like, dude, when I was coming up, 40 hours was full time. And if you wanted to come up, you did 60 hours a week. Yeah. And that's how you got to climb the ladder. That's how you became the boss. You were there. You know? And you had to do it. This is the way that it worked. You know, you worked hard to then not have to work as hard later. Yeah, not start off not working hard. <laughs> <laughs> that's the part that's crazy to me, dude. If you remember a few weeks back, we had Ed from Tattoo Armor on the podcast and he was able to hook us up with a discount code for our followers. So Tattoo Armor is literally the best way to wrap your client. I've been using it. Matt's been using it. And it's just awesome. There's no mess. There's no glue. And it's just super comfortable. I hope you can try it for yourself and just go on to Tattoo Armor and use the code Honest Tattooer for 20% off your order. Since we're here and we're being honest, you know, like. In this shop, you know, we're like, what, like 11 of us here? And some people here have been tattooing for 15 years, you know? Yeah. Some people have been tattooing here for five years, you know? And I don't think that the people that have been tattooing for like five, six years get that to get to the 15-year mark in a good place, you got to put in more time between the first one to seven, one to 10 years, you got to like bust ass, bro. Nobody has that mentality though. It's not. No. And it's crazy because I think it's like, it's across the board <clears throat> and yeah. not just this industry. It's across the board. Like where did, where did this change? I was telling you last time I got my hair cut, the owner of the barbershop was saying the exact same thing that his barbers don't want to come in on time. They're leaving early. They don't, they're like, same thing that happened today happens at the barbershop that I was at where they close at nine o'clock, like eight fifteen. the barbers are like, all right, you know, I'm done for the day. And the, the owner's like, what the fuck, man? Like there's people who still want there are people in the shop in right the now shop right waiting now, for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are leaving. <laughs> it's, it's wild to me. It's wild. Yeah. I just don't get it. I don't get it. Entitlement. It's entitlement or something. I don't know. Yeah. But even like, you know, like uh, as if you're a walk-in tattooer, you know, you're starting your career out. Or even if you're not starting your career out, but you're still just a walk-in tattooer. You're still depending on someone to come in through the door to put money in your pocket that day. Yeah. Then what makes you think that that's going to happen when you want it to happen? Yeah. The craziest thing is to see someone sit around all day. They'll show up at one and then not tattoo at all all day. And then the phone rings. Hey, I'm, I'm, I want to come in for a walk and are you guys available? Yeah. What time are you thinking about coming? I probably won't be able to get to like 730. Oh, well, we closed at eight. So I'm not going to be able to do it today. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I'd be like, I didn't just fucking <laughs> come in and do all those hours to not make something that day. That's wild. Yeah. I'd be like, all right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be here. <laughs> it's wild. Or even something of, I've, I've heard it, you I'll know. I'd be like, what are you trying to get? Oh, yeah, I can take care of that real quick. Or if you're, so many times, you know, like I would think of like when I was, when I was on, on doing walk-ins, uh, you know, I've been there all day. I showed up at 12. It's like nine o'clock and somebody comes in and they want to get a tattoo that's, Three hundred dollars, but they got two hundred on. Yeah. Guess what? I'm doing that tat. I'm doing that tat, bro. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, when I'm looking at all my days, I rather have two hundred than a zero. One hundred percent. Yeah. That's gonna add up at the end of my year. Yeah. I'm not gonna walk away with zero. I'd rather have two hundred than nothing. But there's just a no. I'd rather let that walk away. So where's the line? Where do you where do you draw the line between having like too much pride? Right? Valuing yourself like I'm I'm worth more than taking two hundred dollars for this tattoo. When you're busy when you're busy <laughs> enough to be to, yeah, to be able to make that, that claim. Be, that was gonna be my answer yeah, yeah. too. When you're busy enough. Yeah. 
Uh, pretty much. Yes. Yeah. You need to really self-reflect. Like you can't just, just be like, ah, no, you know, I, I charge 300 an hour. So I'm not going to do this tattoo for any less than that. Meanwhile, you haven't tattooed in three days. So. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's like, no, man, get, get, yeah. live in, we all live in reality. <laughs> you, best, yeah, you best believe I'm doing the just for you special. Yes. That day. And I'm going to make like, it yeah. sound so special. Yeah. I'm be like, guess what, man? All right. You I, know what? You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to tell my boss about this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our minimum is this, but I'm going to hook you up, bro. Yes, sir. Make a, sell that idea, dude. Sell that shit. And do that tattoo with love. Fucking make it be special, dude. And that person's going to walk away and be stoked about that tattoo and tell their friends about it. I oh, want to yeah. ask you something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to call her out. <laughs> Tabs. Right? Yeah. 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 Everybody who comes in for a piercing, mm -hmm. the first thing that she says is, oh, normally it's 100, but I'll give you a deal on it. Without them even flinching about the price to begin with. She just automatically gives them a discount, Every everybody. Why not just say that the discount is the price then? I guess maybe to really buy on the idea that she's given them, you know, a, a great deal. I don't know. I, I, can't, I can't speak for how she runs her business. It just it it boggles my mind. Like, let the person at least try to talk you down, right? Don't talk you, yourself down. Don't talk yourself down. You know, I mean that that also could be a fear of of like losing them off the rip. Yeah, that could also be that fear, which I I, I get how some people get to that point where they're like, I don't want to lose sale. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't know. I just, me personally, I would aim high. And then if you start to see them slip in them, then you start bringing it down. But don't just, don't just give a price. And then before any reaction at all, knock it down. Absolutely. I, I think like a weird, a clear way to see things like that is when you think of like retail. Do you think that businesses are not making money when they do 50% off sales? They're still making money. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. They're, st yeah, they're still making money. That's why companies can sell something, special deal 70% off. And you're like, oh, what a great deal. Guess what? They're still making just a small amount of money, yeah. but they're still making money because their markup is counted for the fact that if we have to sell this at 50% off, we still need to make some money. Yeah. Yeah. So they start way high. And they chop down low as they go by because that's the way that it works. That's why, like, uh, I forget what. The, I wish I had, like, one of the homies that. God oh, damn. Snap. Yeah, yeah, we got the uh, New York's finest uh, fire department behind us. Dude, There's it looks like a party something. on the camera behind <laughs> you, dude. <laughs> dude. Like, right now, if I was, like, going, like. <laughs> it legit looks like that. Yeah, like, we gotta start doing that beatboxing guy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Never a dull moment. It yeah. looks like a straight party. Dude, they're gonna run through this guy's car. Is it the black BMW? <laughs> or the black Mercedes Benz? <laughs> They're Is that like, why they're stopped? They're trying to get by? Yes, they're trying to get by. That's, those guys were like baking for like three hours straight in that car. So they might not be alive. All right. Let's talk, let's talk about a topic that all these youngins love. What's that? Coils. <laughs> <laughs> the coil game. Coils. If your wrist can't hold no coils, you can't tap. <laughs> man I used to love tattooing my coil machines man uh, but after I think it was year 11 that's when I like it started like just a long tattoo session like when I would tattoo 6-7 hours my end of my day dude I'd be destroyed yeah my hands never bothered me until I broke it then that's a different story but I I was always a back and shoulder pain guy. Like I never had any problems with my hands and my wrist. Uh, and actually yeah. switching to a rotary, I felt like that's when I had more of a problem, not because of pain, but I just felt like the, the machine was too light. It took me a really long time to get used to that. Yeah. I liked the weight of a coil machine. It was nice. Uh, <clears throat> just also 
switching to disposable tubes was what really hurt me. Yeah, unbalanced. Yeah, uh, that yeah, it just messed up the balance. Yeah, it did. Too much like overhang. Yeah, too when, much weight. When I had the when it was just all metal tubes, and for a while I had like a set of the the rat grips. Yeah, and you could just sterilize those, and it was sick. That was like yeah, those are cool. The nicest. That's actually tattooing with a Cadillac. Silicone grips, yeah, the dude. Red, uh, red rats, yeah, the red rats, dude. Those were so good. You had a metal tube, that big chunky, freaking like, oh yeah, squeeze grip, dude. You can squeeze as hard as you can. It feels like nothing, no vibration. That's when my lines were the crispiest, dude. I could line so fast. Yeah, it's true. At that point, it was just like. <sighs> just in there i bet i was hurting people hard <laughs> we should put up a poll to see how many people are still using steel tubes i how wonder about, i'm like speaking of polls let's talk about the poll let's Ooh. talk about the poll let's talk about the poll so in case you don't know two days ago today i put up a poll asking how old are you if you're a tattoo artist and we got as of right now, 1,217 responses. That's a lot. It's a Ooh. lot. And if you don't know, a national poll only gets 1,000 people for like their, their averaging or whatever. Yeah. What? So, <clears throat> and that's, so think about like a political poll. If you're thinking about, normally we get about 150 million voters for a presidential election. Mm -hmm. And they base off they base their, their poll results from just 1,000 respondents. So from 1,000 to extrapolating to 150 million, they feel like they're getting a pretty accurate representation of who's going to vote for who. Right. So for us to get 1,200 responses... It's big. It's big. It's pretty big. Yeah, it sounds big. It's and awesome. I feel like it's, it's a pretty accurate representation. Right? I agree. Well, that's cool. So we that's asked, cool. if you are a tattooer, how old are you? 55% are in the 20 to 34 range. 38% is 35 to 49. 6% is over 50. Only 6% of tattoos. And then 1%. I shouldn't have even put this one in. 1% was under 20. So the guys on TikTok... Right. <laughs> so yeah so that's where some of the comments were saying like this is an inaccurate poll because all it's doing is showing the age group of people who are on this platform and different age groups are going to be using different social media platforms and over 50 probably isn't on anything at all but like i said 1200 respondents that's a lot it's dude. a lot that's a lot um so and and again if you don't if you don't know the reason why i put this up was because last week's episode we were talking about as you get older more most likely you're not going to be tattooing as often or at all and people got really upset about that oh yeah people got really upset about it saying like what do you mean i know plenty of people who are over 50 and tattooing it's like, yeah, i know sure. somebody it's about something yeah i'm sure you do <laughs> that's why i put the poll to see let's get some real world data yeah and only 6% of the population of tattooers are over 50. My favorite were the people that were just pulling out like, what about Philip Lou? Yeah, what about him? <laughs> what about yeah. him? What about him, dude? That's Philip Lou, dude. Yeah, he's going to tattoo till he can't. People will make a fight about anything nowadays. It's like the, it wasn't even a controversial post. And people make, people make it so controversial. Yeah. People don't listen. No, man. And I think they like they hear what they want to hear. It's like they hear what they want to hear. And at the end of the day, dude, like I bet you like as much as some tattooers love to tattoo when you're 60 years old. There's just the energy that you have to try to do this as much as you do it now. It's not going to be there. Yeah. Your body's not going to want you to be doing that. You want to be hanging out with either your cat, if you have no kids, <laughs> or your dog, or your grandchildren. Right. You know? Like, you're not going to want to be spending, you know, even though, like, we already said that most of these guys don't want to spend more than, like, four hours, five hours in a tattoo shop. You're definitely not going to spend be spending eight. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. if you're 25 years old right now, you're busting out early. <laughs> yeah. How are you going to feel when you're 60 years old? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, like, shit, dude. They're like, yo, shop opens at 1, show up at 2, club sh- shop closes at 8, leave at 7, dude. <laughs> this is insane, dude. A lot, so a lot of the people who are, actually, I got some pretty cool information out of this, but a lot of the guys who are over 50 who were the ones who got offended. Some people were like, oh, what are you trying to be disrespectful to the people who paved the way? It's like, nah, man. Like, not at all. You clearly do not listen to the show if that's the way you think about us. But they were like, oh, I, I tattoo. I'm, I'm, I'm 51 years old and I tattoo every day and I'm still doing big back pieces. And I'm, I'm that's fucking awesome. That's dude. great. Like, I don't, I'm not mad yeah. at that. Yeah. I think that's great. But I don't think that that's everybody who's over 50 years old. That's very rare. Yeah. You missed it. <laughs> I know. I was. I want to give it a clap because that's. I. I, I, I could, I could add that in. <laughs> yeah, for real. Like you know, I, I like. I saw some people that posted that, and um, I even saw some people that said like, you know, that's absolutely true. Like I didn't even start saving any money till I was like in my thirties. You know, like I've been tattooing at that point. I'd already been tattooing for like twelve years. You know, yeah. fifteen years. I hadn't saved anything. One of the amazing things that I found out was the people. So two things I found out were amazing about this poll. One, a lot of accounts don't even see the option to vote in a poll. No oh, crap. Because one of mine, I tried to vote and I couldn't. Mm-hmm. It's not there. So that's why a lot of people were just commenting their their age and how long they've been tattooing. Yeah. And in those comments, there were a lot of people who started late in life. Yes. Like starting at like 35, 40 years old. Oh, shit. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. A lot. A lot. Yeah. Uh, somebody <sighs> didn't, they didn't comment this, but they DM'd me about it. And they were like, they're like, what you just said here is one of the reasons why I like, I left tattooing. They're like, I went back to school and I went into like dentistry. Wow. Because of what? What, what? what did you say? Because they were like, I, they said that they couldn't see, like they started tattooing and they said that they couldn't, like they could see in the future. They're like, I don't think I can maintain this level of hustle work yeah. for this long, you know, down the line. I need to go do something else. Yeah. It's not for everybody. No, it's not. It's not. It's hard. And that's what I mean. I'm like, if you're not kind of like what you just said man like if you're not willing to put in the work early on like now when you're first like in your first 10 years if you're not willing to put in like those long hours those long amount of effort at time then what do you think you're gonna want to do later you know you're already tattooing part-time hours <laughs> <laughs> you're already yeah. tattooing part-time dude that's when you can't get offended when somebody's like, oh, so what do you, what do you do for real work? <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, you tattoo part time. It's wild. <clears throat> it's like, man, I get it if you tattoo part time, but you've been doing it for like 20 years and you're like, yeah, man, I'm tired and I don't have to work as much or as hard. You know, what's so funny is that <clears throat> I consider my, myself a part time tattooer. Mm-hmm. I'm only here three or four days a week, depending on Nicole's schedule. Mm-hmm. That's part time. Yeah. But I also feel like I never fucking stop. Yeah. So I'm part time here, but I'm like full time up here, full time drawing. At but home. I, I think you're, you're, you're a full time artist. Yeah. You're a full time artist. Like you might tattoo part time hours, but you're a full time artist. Right. You know, you're making artwork. You're making prints out of that artwork yourself. You're selling it. You're packaging it, marketing it. Then on top of that, you know, you draw all your designs. So you're full-time artist, part-time tattooer. Yeah. You know, and for that, you get one of those. <laughs> <laughs> because that shit is work, man. It's work. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. Um, but I think like uh, a lot of people don't, they don't see that. They don't see that. It it takes a lot. One of the comments that hours. I love to see is when, when clients say that they're booked out for a couple of months mm-hmm. and then the other jealous cl- uh, artist in the comments will be like, well, yeah, you say you're booked out for four months, but you're probably only tattooing three days a week. 
Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I mean, like that should be completely okay. Uh, I think it's anybody should tattoo as much as they want, as long as they are getting out of tattooing what they want for the time that they're putting into it. Yeah. But if you're an ambitious person and you want a lot in life, then you gotta match your effort to the things that you want. I mean, if you're just not ambitious, you don't want a lot of, a lot of things, you, you know, then yeah, you can just fuck off and just do nothing. <laughs> and, and that's fine. Some people are okay with being a starving artist. I am not. Do you feel like you would have a different lifestyle or a different relationship with your money if you weren't tattooing? Like, let's say you were still doing uh, training. I would still be, you know what's crazy? If I was still doing, a, if I was still a personal trainer, I would be it doing two things. Either A, I'd be either like a regional director and I'd be managing like a hundred gyms on a big giant company. Okay. You know, like that would be my route. Or I would be making videos on either YouTube or for like Beachbody as like a coach for like, that's the angle I would have took. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd yeah. be like a fitness personality. That, that's what I would just aim for because that's my personality. Yeah. That is what I go for. You know, like I'm going to go. I want top. I want to go there. That is just how I roll. Yeah. So then the answer to that is yes, you would have the same relationship. I'd have the same relationship with money. Yeah. I would still go after, I still want to wear really nice clothes. I still want to drive a nice car, have a nice house and I'm going to work my ass off to get it. Yeah. I think what's funny is I, I've actually seen other tattooers talk about this the same way that I think of it with money where like I could easily justify spending $300 Five hundred dollars on some nonsense because they're like, oh, you know, I make that in a couple hours. It's okay. Yeah. It's like no big deal. No big deal. But then other people who they they think of their money differently, they're like, whoa, three hundred dollars is a lot of money. Like, why are you going to do that? And like, I, I just I don't think of it the same way. Like three hundred dollars, like oh, it's a quick walk in. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's how it's um <clears throat> they they call that like living on a scarcity mentality you know like you always think like there's never like there's not enough always yeah and then you either think of like oh man i can i can never get this or like i don't know when something's coming in so you you always try <laughs> i know you thought yeah. <laughs> you can never get you this, never get this. <laughs> you <laughs> never get this <laughs> borat yeah i love it um but honestly nah, the, nah, people, nah, nah, nah. the people that have that mentality if they have that mentality plus a very strong work mm -hmm. ethic, they become the richest people in oh, the yeah, world. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They go off. Those are the people that become the wealthiest people in the world. If I had that mentality and the same level of drive, but I was like, but I'm not spending a fucking dime of what I make. I just want to freaking, I'd be rich. It's the Gary V mentality. Exactly. I was like, I want to make so much, but I don't want to spend any of it. You know, you become super wealthy. I could appreciate that. But in my mind, while I'm here on this earth, I want to enjoy it. So I agree with yeah, you. Some of it's got to get used. Yeah. Yes, I agree with you. I could get hit by a car tomorrow, dude. Yep. I could freaking get diagnosed with some crazy illness yeah. in a week. And then it's, I got to just leave a bunch of money in a bank account. Yeah. <laughs> like, so it's like, I feel like there, there is, Truth to what you're saying as well. Same thing about dieting. Like I've, I've never dieted. I never had to, but I see people who, who like are really strict with their diet and they hate everything that they eat. And they, I'm like, that sounds miserable. That sounds miserable. Like I understand you want to look good. You want to lose some weight. And that's, that's awesome. But I mean, you should enjoy the food that you eat. I agree. Yeah. There's a mental satisfaction from putting yourself through rough shit. Mm -hmm. Right. There's like a mental reward of like, I did something that was really hard, you know, whether it's mental or physical, whether it is just like uh, meditating, even just meditating of like, sit there, 
don't think about anything. You just breathe, you know? Like, it still gives you a certain level of, like, oneness. And after you're done, you're like, oh, man, I feel good, you yeah. know? And that's, for some people, that would feel terrible to be like, all right, just sit there, do nothing. Think about nothing. Just think about your breathing. They're like, oh, my God, but I have a million things to do. Stop. <laughs> you ever hear about that room? I forgot where it is, where it's the most silent room in the world. And it's like super padded with all this acoustic foam. And it's like, it's suspended so that like there's no vibration at all, even in the floor. And it's so quiet in there that you could hear like the blood traveling through your veins. What? And yeah. And so what they do is they put people in there to see how long they'll last. They turn off all the lights. So you can't see a goddamn thing. You can't hear anything. You can't feel anything because the whole room is literally just floating. And they say that people only last like, less than a minute in there before they go crazy no way because like you and to me it sounds like yeah you just you, it's super quiet just hang out and chill with your thoughts or whatever but people are in there like nah man like you go crazy because you can't hear anything but like your own body living and it's fucking wild that's wild that's not, i thought of, the first thing that i thought of was those uh, uh what are they called sensory deprivation tanks yeah you know where you like flow in salt water so you're just literally just floating and but you could hear the water sloshing around in there i guess so yeah but just with nothing just nothing. that must feel like what it feels like to go back to the creator bro I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> you're back to black back to nothing it's so funny because when i when i see things like that I think to myself, like, I could do that for a little while. I'll watch American Ninja Warrior. Like, I can fucking do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh. But I think that that's a test to, like, your metal, dude. I think that's a test to your metal. Like, that when you see something, you're like, if I put my mind to, mind to do that, I'd fucking do it. You watch, know? watch a professional UFC fight. I can take that guy. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm the guy coming out yeah, of the Jackie yeah, Chan right. movie and trying to fight everybody in the street. Uh, dude. <laughs> just like the professional the professional UFC watchers. Did you they know just, the guys were like, well, fuck it. They get into the technicalities of it. I don't They're know like, if you, you ever, don't know shit. You guys ever watch like How I Met Your Mother? Yeah. But there's like the episode where Barney yeah. goes like, I can run the fucking marathon. They're like, you're not going to train. No, I can, anybody can do that, dude. Yeah. I'm going to run the marathon. And he does. <laughs> and then he sits on the train and that's when his legs give out. He can't get out of the train. So he ends up just riding the train. Back <laughs> he gets stuck in there. Yeah, he gets stuck in the train because oh, his legs are just done. They're they like dead. <laughs> they came out. It's so good. That's hilarious. Oh, man. That's a sleeper show. Yeah. For sure. But I think that that's. There's people that think like that though. Like, you know, when you're like, you're a, pl a problem solver, Matt, like I've seen you be like, oh, I need to figure this out. You know, if I need, if I need to like, instead of buying something, you're like, how can I do it? Yeah. I'm the total, I was like, I can't do that. I'm really good at tattooing. I'll tattoo him and I'll pay somebody else to go do this shit. I don't know. I'm like, I don't know how to do that. It would take me time to learn it. I'll go tattoo. I'm already good at that. I'll earn some money and I'm going to pay somebody that took time to learn that skill. Yeah. That's usually my approach to everything. Yeah. It's so funny because you're right. I, I love problem solving. I love doing something outside of my normal realm of what I do every day. And then being like, fuck yeah, I did that. Right? I did that. And not that I get this from him, but my father-in-law is very innovative and now that he's older and he's retired and he's more or less just sitting around looking for things to do, I'll, I'll approach him with things that I would love to figure out on my own. But then I go to him as like, I don't know what I'm doing here. Can you help me figure this out? And he, I, just like a different school of thought, he comes up with this craziest like concoction of how to do stuff. <laughs> and it's like so over the top and overbuilt. And I feel bad in a way because all this effort that he goes into figuring it out, I just do it the way that I want to do it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool to watch somebody else just like think and go through the process of trying to figure something out. It's like, right. I don't know. I think that's really cool. Yeah. I feel like that is. Yeah. That happened today with uh, Heather's tattoo. Oh, she was stressed the fuck out. She was stressed the fuck out. We're all, we've all been there, yeah. you know? So one of our coworkers, you know, she had a, Tattoo placement is a pain in the ass, especially when you're trying to arrange like a full leg of tattoos, you know? Yeah. And the way that it was sitting, it was kind of like some things had to be modified. And of course, like we all jump on it. 
you know, like, oh, you should maybe do this, do that. Trying to just, you know, problem solving. We're all trying to, you know, solve the thing. But it's it's one of those things where you got to just figure it out. Yeah. That whole progress, that the, the whole project that she's doing, I feel like the guy comes like four days in a row. Yeah, every time he's like four days in a row. Why not knowing that he's going to be here four days in a row, plan those four, four tattoos to work together and avoid the, the whole situation that she had today. I mean, cause she's doing one tattoo today, tomorrow. She's trying to stencil around that tattoo. Then the next day trying to stencil around that tattoo, like just figure it all out in the beginning. That way you're not stuck in this <laughs> rut again. I feel like you can do that even if you don't have it all laid out, you know, like, because I feel like even when I look at a, at an arm and I'm planning like a Japanese sleeve, I'm like main elements going to go there, there, there. That's where all the main parts of this tattoo are going to be. And I'm like, this is where the tiger's going to be. That's where the snake's going to be. And then I just got to figure out where the other little filler elements are going to end yeah. up at, <clears throat> you know, but off the rip, I know where like, it's like shooting a movie. You're like, this shot needs the lead character to be in the center and it needs to be there. Storyboard it. Yes. That's it. You like, you don't need to have it all figured out completely in detail, but you need to just have like the either circles and squares, you know, in, in like, you know, in a, in a, in a nice, you know, picture and you're like, Oh, this is where that thing's going to be. That's where that thing's going to be. And just grid it out a little bit. I saw somebody laying out a freehand like back piece and I hadn't seen that in so long where somebody actually just did a grid of squares mm. on the full body mm. so they could see it as, you know, in quarters. And they're like, okay, yeah, that's where that thing's going to be. That's where that, and then when they drew it on, I was like, oh, money. Yeah. Off the rip. Did he do <clears throat> quarters or thirds? I think he did thirds. That makes Actually, sense. I think he did thirds. But he did like, you know, it was like from full neck to butt. Yeah. And he had it all gridded out and he free handed the whole, but he did a dragon. But everything landed perfectly where it needed to be. <clears throat> I did not pay attention at all to what she was struggling with today. So what was the problem? Placement. Placement. But what, like, specifically with what? Like, what was, what, I didn't even see the tattoo. <clears throat> I, I didn't got, go over there at all. Um, it was, uh, it was a mantis, a pre mantis. Okay. And it was going on the side of the leg. And you had to keep enough space around the kneecap for then the kneecap pieces to go in. Got it. And there were two, two mantises, one on each side, on the same spot, but they're not exactly the same. You know what solves that problem? Drawing. Yes. Yes. And that's uh, the hard part about like, you know, that's where I kind of was like hinting towards of like, hey, you just got to just redraw those legs. <laughs> just redraw those legs. What was she just trying to replace the stencil that was already made? Replace the stencil that was already yeah, made. Just, just yeah, draw the legs different. Draw the legs different. That's how, always usually how the, hard is it to draw primates' legs? Not hard at all. Not right? that hard. You know, but it's it's a matter of like you know whenever you draw something once and you just really want to do it like that, you know, it's hard to let it go. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta lose your pride and. <laughs> do, it, do, it, do it the way that's gonna work. I know. Sometimes you gotta dodge, duck, <laughs> dive, dip, and dodge. Yeah. Uh, the other day, I I did a huge geisha on a thigh, and I drew this snake around it. And then when I put it on, I was like, I gotta change this tail, man. I was like, this is flipping like this, and it used to flip completely the opposite way. Yep. And even though it looked good. I was like, I got to freehand this tail going the yeah, other way yeah. because it's going to just look better. Yeah. And sometimes you just got to do that. You got to do it. Sometimes you just got to do it. And it's one of those things that like, as soon as you put it on and you stand back, you're like, oh, you get that like weird feeling in there that yeah. tells you that it's like, it's not it. And then this always happens to tattooers. Like we know that it ain't it, but you're like, yo, what do you think about this? <laughs> just somebody. Yeah. somebody was like, oh, it looks great. And yeah, they're like, somebody squints their eyes a little bit and they're like, yeah. they get the same feeling and you're like, oh shit, he's got the same feeling. <laughs> yeah, dude. Let's see I, what he says. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. That's such a, like a fact, dude. It's like every time. And then they'll be like, nah, bro, I think you should. I'd be like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I know. You sure, man? You sure? 
All yeah, right. man. You're like, fuck, I gotta fuck. All right. All right. Give me the alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> Take this whole Stop thing off. Stop rubbing hard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> dude. Dude. <laughs> it's a fact of life. What do you think is better in that situation to detach yourself from the artwork or just double down and be like super devoted to making it work? Oh, like that's why I only do like one client a day for like the big pieces that I do because I want to be able to like commit to the design needs to look you need to like before you even touch a person with a tattoo machine it needs to feel like it's fucking as good as it could possibly be yeah. Yeah. it needs to feel good you need to feel so good about it and even better if you have like three other badass tattooers around you they're like yeah bro that shit's fucking sick and you're like all right yeah there's a woodworker that i follow david pachuto and he says it all the time that every piece of furniture or whatever that he builds he has no emotional and sentimental attachment to it at all he could build it take pictures of it post it on youtube destroy it and just throw it right out he does not care at all and it makes me want to be that way sometimes because there are just some some pieces are just throwaway pieces that you shouldn't care about. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying tattoos on, on people. Just like if, if you draw something just for a sketch, for a study, for practice, there's no reason to keep that for the rest of your life. And I, I've been trying to instill that into Sammy because every doodle, every little scribble he makes, <laughs> he's hanging on the wall and he's like, look at how proud I am. And like when he's not looking, I'm trying to like take all the scraps and throw it in the garbage. Yeah. And he gets so mad if he sees it. I'm like, you can't save everything, man. You can't. You can't save it all. You got to detach yourself a little bit. I think so. Because I think there's such a difference. You want to teach him that there is the exercise of drawing and then there's the one that it's like, I am making the piece. Yeah. And I feel like that's the the practice when you're just like drawing stuff, drawing stuff, drawing stuff. I got I just thought of my recommendation for this week. But I'm so I'm gonna save it. Save but it. but it, it it'll tie into the idea of do <laughs> having having a body of work, but like when you're when you're making a portfolio, you have a body of work, but you gotta pick just a few that represent what you want to show people. So you might have 50 really good pieces, but you got to narrow it down to maybe 12 to put in your portfolio. And that's like, those are the ones that you really are most proud of. But I'll leave that. I'll see that for my, for the recommendation. For my recommendations. Yeah. <clears throat> Cause it actually has nothing to do with that, but that's kind of like the connection I made. But from what you just said about like, I feel like, man, I detach myself from tattoos I think about just more of like what I'm giving that person because after I goes out the door, man, I'm never seeing that thing mostly. Yeah. Like it's, it's just gone. I took a photo of it. That's about it. But it's art that's gone. That's always kind of like the saddest part. And I've gotten sad about it sometimes. I'm like, God damn, I've sacrificed or given 70 years to something that unlike, you know, a marble sculpture you know, an oil painting yeah. will carry on. But that's still out there. It's still there in the world. It's as, not in your possession. Right. But I mean, I've done. Like, think about, the, think about the guys who do sandcastle art or like chalk art. Yeah. Right. When it rains or when that's the tide gone. comes in, that's that, gone. That, that's that is literally gone. gone. That's that true. That is gone. That and is they, gone. Like, they go in on those things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like incredible sculptures only for it to be destroyed. Yep. And that's what they thrive off of. The, like their whole thing is I love doing, I love putting in the work for this temporary enjoyment. They love the act of doing. Yeah. Not so much the end result. The end result is like the, the process. Which is so funny because I am the actual opposite of that. And I, I know that a lot of people are like, oh, you should enjoy the journey. The journey, the journey is the most, I'm like, oh, yeah. fuck that, dude. I, in most cases, I fucking hate the journey. And I just want to look at the end product and like, fuck yeah, I made yeah, that. Yeah, I made that shit. <laughs> Man, whenever I, when I used to paint, which I'm glad I don't anymore, I used to fucking curse and throw shit. I would get to a point of the painting and then like I would fuck something up. And instead of just being like, all right, well, this is, this is the journey. Let's just keep going with it. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. like, fuck, fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, I think that's that's the part about uh, painting that, unlike tattooing, you know, tattooing to me it's so it's 
tight, you know? Yeah. And with painting, it's kind of like same. It's like you got to let it, the painting is when it's done, you know? So it's like for a long time, you're going to have this like awkward stage of yeah, a painting yeah, yeah, yeah. when you're just like, oh, I fucking hate this. What am I even doing? Yeah. I suck. You know, and there's that even, I've done portraits of people like that, that you're going and you're like, oh my God, dude, I can't <laughs> believe I am doing this right now. This is looking nothing like this person. But then you just trust your gut that you are, that your yeah. eyes are right. Your hand's moving just right. Everything's going to be okay. And it's really like, oh, yeah. it looks exactly like that person. Look at that. Done. As much as I believe that a good artist has the ability to make a painting or a drawing look good from start to finish, like even, even the in-progress points of their pieces look good. I think the difference between someone who doesn't do good art compared to someone who has like a professional quality looking art is yeah. the, let's say the amateur, they just, they, they call it done too soon. Yes. Right. Cause if an amateur artist stops their painting and says, well, this is, this is, this is it. This is as best as I could do someone who's more advanced in their techniques can pick up that same picture that the amateur just left, finish it and make it look good. And make it look really good. Yeah. Yeah. And all that is just adding more time onto it. Even with tattoos, it's, it's like that. Yeah. It's happened to me multiple times where I, you know, you do a tattoo and, uh, you know, you get the tattoo to like 60% done and you tell that person, it's like, look, dude, I know it's been like four hours, five hours, but I need another session on this. And they're like, oh, really? And you're like, yeah, man. And then they're like kind of bummed, you know, because they feel like it looks pretty good. They're like, oh, you can't just finish this. Yeah. And you're like, nah, dude, I need like a whole nother session on this. And then you get that second session on it and you put in another like five, six hours on it. And then they're like, whoa, dude. Yeah. Like I had no idea that it's because they don't see the foresight. They don't have like the, the vision. And right. then they're like this looks incredible, dude. I had no idea that this is what it was going to look like. I thought that it looked good before. That's why I was like, call it done. Cause it looked good enough. Yeah. And you're like, it's not good enough. Yeah. It's not there yet. Yeah. But then what is good enough? It's up for you to decide. Exactly. I feel like you set your own standard, you know, you can, you can be okay with being fine. You know, like, Oh, how does that look? Oh, that looks fine. Yeah. Or you want to be like, Oh, that looks fucking amazing. That looks great. And I remember Louis C.K. having like this whole bit about people overusing the word amazing, about how everything's amazing. I'm like, no, amazing was a very rarely used word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like now everything's fucking amazing. Yeah. Like, no, no, not everything's fucking amazing. How was that coffee around the corner? Oh, it was amazing. Amazing. Coffee. You're like, oh shit, for real. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, no, man. It's like, shit, dude. That deli coffee? Yeah. <laughs> it's New York's best cup of coffee. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's the water. It's the water. It's always been the water. <laughs> oh, man. But I, 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 like, I like when people learn to push themselves harder. Because I feel like everybody could do that in every aspect of their life. Yeah. Yeah. And you can call that either being like a freaking obsessed perfectionist kind of person but it's like what the fuck are we here to do yeah. you get one life push yourself. you're pushing or you're pulling <laughs> push I'd yourself yeah. i'd rather push yeah man yeah. you know like so many things all right i think that was good yeah that's a solid hour good after show I'm going to throw all that stuff that you were complaining about earlier. To the <laughs> show. I'm going to chop right. it up, <laughs> chop it up, put it in there. Um, Speaking of the after show. Ooh. Business cards. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's just random shit. All right. If you would like to get the after show. The only way to do that is to head over to our Patreon page mm -hmm. and you can sign up to be a Patreon supporter. And to get there, you have to go to patreon.com slash honest tattooer. There's three tiers to choose from. I know I said I was going to add another one and I have not done that yet. And I thought about it and I'm, I am going to do it. It's not going to affect anything else. So if you already have a, a paid tier already, you're fine. There's just going to be another one kind of snuck right in between some of them. So head over to patreon.com slash honest tattooer and 
sign up to be a Patreon supporter and you'll see some extra content that doesn't make it into the regular show. And this week, we're going to have John bitching about <laughs> <laughs> everything. Everything. <laughs> Bad artists leaving early. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you. Uh, next week, we have a special guest. I hope you guys yeah. come back and we'll see you then. Do you and have any recommendations? Oh, yes. Uh, recommendations. So one of my favorite podcasts to watch is The Diary of a CEO. And uh, I just finished an episode with the author of The 48 Laws of Power. And one thing that I'll leave you guys uh, from that episode is about having toxic friends. You know, sometimes you're going to meet people that initially seem super interesting, uh, super engaging, and they're super engaged by you and they just overly want to be, you know, connected to you or friends with you, etc. And then as time goes by, you realize that these people are constantly complaining about everything. They're either complaining about how they're, you know, their ex was terrible. Their last job was terrible. How everything is terrible around them, you know? And these people just literally are like, just such negativity is just constantly, you know? And then that's getting dumped on you all of the time, you know? And one thing about these kind of people is that people that perceive that are constantly going to bring you down. You know, mm -hmm. people that constantly are negative are going to push that negativity onto you, whether you think so or not. And the day that you say something to them about like, hey, man, I'm thinking about like stepping out, you know, you immediately become the villain, mm -hmm. you know, and it's so crazy that you're going to think like there's something wrong with you for it. Like, you're going to think like, oh, am I a bad person for not being there for my friend? This guy really needs me. He's, he's hurting. Yes. Yeah. You're going to think that you're a bad person for it. And um, all I'm going to tell you is you're going to encounter these people in your life. It's just part of life. And if you can, avoid them at all cost and know when to fucking walk away. Yeah. That's it. Cool. You got anything? If you know you got to slow down to make your shit look nice, slow down. That's a good tip. Absolutely. A lot of pe a lot of people out there trying to be the fastest tattooers on earth. But if you're trying to do quality tattoos and you care about it, slow down. Slow down. But don't overwork the skin. Slow down. Speed you, comes with experience. Yeah, you guys know what I mean. Exactly. Speed comes with experience and repetition. Efficiency is better than speed. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. And solid technique. So I started a book last night called Tidy the Fuck Up. And it's Tidy the, tidy the Fuck Up, The Art of Organizing Your Shit. Mm. And the author is Messy Kondo. I don't know if that's a stage name or Messy what. Messy Kondo. Kondo. <laughs> Messy Kondo, that's a yeah. play on that. Sounds yeah. like, yeah. That sounds like Marie Kondo. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely a. <laughs> a play on that yeah. it's a messy, yeah, condo. messy condo. condo it's so good <laughs> and so simple but good yeah it's so good, so good. and <laughs> the reason why I like this because if you remember a couple of weeks ago I, I recommended that book Sales Badassery yeah where it's just like cursing the entire time yes. this one's even more oh, and it's sick. like every other word is just like get your shit together Stop acting like a pussy. Like it's like we see what motivates you, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we see it's what like, motivates you. It's like your gym, bro. <laughs> but like, it's, stop it's, being a fucking punk. I know you got one more rep in you. <laughs> like don't pussy out on me. Yeah, just one more push. Do it. Yeah. But so the the book is about organizing pretty much your house, like how to maintain a mm. a living space that you actually enjoy being in. Right. And one of the things that they talk about in the book is like, you shouldn't go in, you shouldn't walk into your house and, and notice how it looks. You should notice how does the room make you feel two different things. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So if the mess doesn't make you feel like shit, 
then just leave it. It's fine. You feel okay with it. But <laughs> so I asked Sammy today because I was trying to get to him to like start picking up all your stuff, right? So I asked him today. I was like, just you know, look around the house. How, what do you feel like? What, what does it make you feel? And I didn't even say anything about the toys. I was like, what do you think? What, how does the house make you feel? He's like, you know what actually makes me really sad? I'm like, oh, really? Why? He's like, because when I look outside, there's no pool back there. <laughs> <laughs> really, dude? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so good. Man. But the reason why I made this connection to what we were talking about before is the author talked about the refrigerator. How if you have kids, most likely you've got a shit ton of stuff on the refrigerator, drawings, magnets, whatever. Yeah. And she was saying that uh, a good lesson to instill in your kid is this refrigerator is treasure and not everything deserves to be put on here. Only your best work is allowed to go on here. So make your kid realize that if something goes in the refrigerator, that's really special. And so it was kind of like what I was think, t talking about before with if you're building a portfolio, mm -hmm. like detach yourself from some of the things that you think is really good and just really hone into like what is what makes your work your work yeah yeah that's, that's not every good. song on the album is a hitter that's right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's that's a fact bro that's a fact well guys all righty we hope we had you had a good time we definitely did yeah yeah it was a fun show all right it's fun when it's just us sometimes i know it is yeah. it is for sure and we'll hope to see you next week yeah. thank you so much bye peace guys bye.